Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In today's screencast, I'm going to introduce you to a brand new feature in iOS 11, the ability to add drag and drop support into your apps. The iPad comes with nice multitasking support. You can run two apps side by side with the split view feature or the slide over mode. And new this year, iOS has added the ability to drag and drop items between apps. This is sure to be a huge time saver and greatly desired by users. And luckily, it's pretty easy to implement. In this screencast, I'll show you how to add drag and drop support to your iOS apps. I'll be showing you how to do this with the table view in this screencast, but if you watch this screencast, you'll also understand how to do it with collection views because it's pretty much the exact same process, just slightly different APIs. I have a simple iPad app here called Pet Finder that lists a batch of pets up for adoption. I'd like to add drag and drop support into this app so that I can drag the pets from the top table view into the bottom table view. I'd also like to be able to drag and drop two completely different apps. For example, maybe I want to add a reminder for a pet I'd like to adopt. The first step to adding drag and drop support is to create a drag item object. This represents the item that you want to drag, which is a pet in our case. A drag item is a small wrapper around an item provider. You can think of the item provider as the brains behind the operation. It knows how to convert your item into different data formats. For now, we're going to start simple and we'll create an item provider that can export our pet as a simple string with the name of the pet. I'll start by opening petsdatastore.swift and import mobile core services. This is required to use a UTI type enumeration that I'll need in a moment. Next, I'll make a helper method to create the drag items for a given index path. First, I'll look up the pet for the given index path. Then, I'll create an empty NS item provider. Remember that a UI drag item is just a simple wrapper around an NS item provider, which you can think of as the brains behind the data conversion task. I'll then call register data representation, passing in the plain text UTI. This is basically saying, hey, this item provider supports formatting this data as plain text, and here's a closure to call whenever you want to format it this way. Note that this closure isn't called right away. It's only called when you finish dragging the data somewhere and wherever you drop it wants to receive the data in this format. Once the drop target requests the data in this plain text format, I'll then convert the pet's name to a data buffer in UTF-8 format. Once I'm done, I'll call the completion handler. Now that I've created the NS item provider, I create a UI drag item wrapper. Finally, I return this as an array. Now that we have this method, it's easy to conform to the protocol required to add drag and drop support. I'll open petsViewController.swift and add an extension to conform to the protocol, UI table view drag delegate. It has just a single method to implement, table view items for beginning session at. Inside this method, I find the appropriate data source using a helper method. And then I call the drag items method we just wrote on that data source. Finally, inside view did load, right before table view reload data, I'll set the drag delegate to self. That's it. I'll build and run. And note that if I tap and hold on an item, it starts dragging. Of course, I can't drop it in this app yet because I haven't added drop support yet. However, I can drop it elsewhere. To show you this, I'll slide up from the bottom of the screen and drag reminders over to the right and dock it. Then I'll drag tiger over to reminders. And nice, it accepts the drag and automatically adds a reminder to the list. At this point, we've implemented the method required to add dragging support. There was just one required method to get the list of dragged items. Remember that the drag item was just a wrapper around the item provider, which we provided with a closure to convert the pet into a string data format. Now let's implement the delegate to provide dropping support, which has three required methods. iOS calls your first method to find out what type of data your app accepts. In our case, we'll just accept strings. iOS then calls your second method to find out what you intend to do with that data as the user drags the item around. And in our case, we'll do different things based on different situations between move, copy, or cancel. The third required delegate method is called when the user commits the drop. In this case, we'll go back to the item provider and request the data in string format. Let's see what this looks like. First, I'll open pet.swift and add a helper method to retrieve the types of objects that we can accept. The past in session object has a method called can load objects, which you can use to see if the data being dropped can be converted into a target object type. We're going to only accept strings, so we'll pass in nsString.self here. Note that although we're only accepting strings at the moment, you can accept multiple types of data if you'd like. 
That's what I'll be showing you in the next screencast, which covers accepting multiple data representations. Next, I'll open PetsViewController.Swift and add an extension for the protocol required to accept dropping data, UI table view drop delegate. We'll start with the first required method, table view can handle. This will simply call the helper method that we just wrote. Next, I'll implement the second required method, table view drop session did update with destination index path. Basically, this method lets you specify what you intend to do with the drop data, either move it, copy it, or reject it. We'll be doing different things in different cases. First, we'll see if the user is dragging within the source table. If it is, and they're dragging more than one item, we'll reject it by returning a drop proposal of type cancel. For this app, you can only move one item at a time around the table view. Now here, we know that the user is dragging one thing within our table view. So we'll return that in this case, we intend to move the item from the old spot to the new spot within the table view rather than copy it. Finally, if we reach the else statement, then we know that we're receiving an item that came from some other table view. And in this case, we'll make a copy of the data. There's one required method left, table view perform drop with. This is the workhorse that does the drop operation. First, we'll get the data source for the table view. Then we'll figure out where we should put the new item. If the coordinator gives us a destination index path, then great, we'll just use that. But if it doesn't, then we'll create an index path to put it at the end of the table. Finally, we loop through all of the items that are dropped and process each one. There are three cases we need to handle. First, the item originated from the same app and the same table view. Second, the item originated in the same app but a different table view. And third, the item originated from a different app. Let's start with the final case as the other two are optimizations. I'll put an if false temporarily so that we can focus just on this final case for now. First, I'll print a message out so we can see what case we're in while we're debugging. Although eventually this will be called only when we receive data drop from a different app. But remember, I put a if false in there for the other cases. So for now, this will always be called. Next, I get a reference to the item provider. Remember, this is that brainy object that can convert the data you're dragging into different formats. Then I use a helper method on the item provider to load the data in the format I want to accept, NSString in this case. NSString is one of the objects that implements the required protocols for conversion, along with NS attributed string, NS URL, UI color, UI image, and MK map item. You can also make your own objects conform to this protocol like you'll learn in the next screencast. I then convert the string from an NS string to a string, I then create a pet object given the name, unknown for the type, and no image. I then add the new pet to our list of pets and the data source. And finally, I update the table view with table view insert rows, making sure to execute this on the main thread. There's one last thing. Back in view did load, I'll set the drop delegate to self. Oops, I have a typo here. I typed index path, but meant in. At this point, I can build and run and check it out. I can drag and drop items from the Reminders app into my app. I can also drag items between the table views and the table view itself. But if I do this, I lose data since currently I'm only saving the name of the pet out. Luckily, there is an optimization here that will fix that and we'll do that next. If you think about it, if you want to drag and drop within your own app, what we're doing right now is kind of silly. We already have the pet object in memory, so there's no need to encode it into a limited UTF-8 string and then back again. Instead, if it's in the same table view, we should simply swap the rows. And if it's within the same app, but a different table view, then luckily the drag item provides a handy local object property that you can use to squirrel away the pet later. Hey, squirrels make great pets. Anyway, let's take a look. Let's fill in that first to do. If the item has the source index path property set, that means it's from the same app and the same table view. So I'll call move item on the data source to swap the positions. Then on the main thread, I'll perform a batch update to delete the row with the source and insert a row with the destination. But what if the item comes from the same app but a different table view? Well, in that case, I'll open petsdatasource.swift and in drag items four, right before I return the array of the drag item, I'll set the drag items local object to the pet I'd like to transfer. Now, back in petsviewcontroller.swift, I can implement the final to do. If the local object is set, then I'll add it to the data source directly and update the table view. Now I'll build and run and check it out. I can move items within the table view, which works by swapping the rows. 
as we see in the console with the same app, same table view case. I can also move items to the completely different adopted pets table view and it also works. We can see this works by copying the pet we stored in the local objects property as we can see in the console with the same app, different table view case. There's one last thing I want to show you. Although encoding our string into UTF-8 format happens very quickly, sometimes when you're receiving data from another app, it may take a while to do the conversion. So when dropping an item to a table view, it's better to insert a placeholder cell so that the user knows that the conversion is taking place. Luckily, this is a quick fix. Still in PetsViewController.Swift, inside TableView Perform Drop With, in the different app case, I'll call a helper method to add the placeholder cell. I need to pass in the drag item, the destination path, the identifier of the cell to use and height, and a handler to update the cell. I just set the text to loading. Then, once the item provider load object closure completes, I'll call context commit insertion and pass in a closure to update the data source appropriately. iOS will handle the table view animations automatically. I'll build and run, and if I drag a string in from another app, I see a brief loading placeholder. It's pretty quick for this, but it's a good practice for when your data gets more involved. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should know how to implement drag and drop support into your iOS apps. I've shown you how to do this with table views, but now that you understand the process, you can do this exact same thing with collection views if you prefer that. You might be curious how you can save your data using multiple different formats, or how you can drag and drop from custom views, and that's what I'll be covering in my next screencast. I promise it won't be a drag. That's it for this screencast. I'm out.